In this video, we'll go through some of the solving basics for trig equations while looking at the equation sine theta equals one half. Now, when I'm solving a trig equation in this format, I like to think which angle or angles have a sine of one half. And that really helps you link it back to a basic skill that you probably have finding exact values. So make sure you know your unit circle. Um, solving an equation like this will feel very similar and we're just kind of going in the opposite order. So let's take a look. Here's our outline. In step one, we do our analysis. We figure out which quadrants we're working in and which reference triangle we should use. And that will help us in step two, determine our angle answers. And we'll look at two different ways that you can state answers for a problem like this. All right, so for sine theta equals one half, let's first analyze which quadrants we should work in. And to do this, we're going to use the acronym ASTC. Think all students take classes. And label your quadrant, starting in quadrant one and working counterclockwise, ASTC. This tells us which trig functions are positive in each quadrant. So the A stands for all in quadrant one, they're all positive. In quadrant two, it's sine and it's reciprocal cosecant. Those are positive, the rest are negative. Quadrant three, tangent and cotangent are positive. And in quadrant four, that C tells us cosine and it's reciprocal secant are positive. So looking back to our problem, we see we're working with sine theta equals a positive value, positive one half. So we need to be working in quadrants where the sine or the y coordinates when on the unit circle are positive. So it looks like it'll be quadrant one and quadrant two. Let's sketch in those angles here. And now we're ready to determine which reference triangle we should be using. So if you aren't familiar with your special right triangles and how they work on the unit circle, I'll post a link to unit circle basics. There are videos for all three of the special right triangles that are on the unit circle. So go check those out. Um, but right now we're going to assume we know that and we're looking at a sine value equal to one half. So that's the Y coordinate or the vertical leg of a triangle needs to be the value one half. And I always think of that one as the shortest possible leg. So we should know we're working with the 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. And so the 30 right here is really what we're looking at, the central angle. That's going to be our reference angle and that's going to help us determine what our actual angle answers are for this problem. Okay, and usually when you're solving a trig equation, you aren't going to notate in degrees, you'll be in radians. So we just need to flip 30 degrees to radians. So that's pi over six radians. And that's going to be the reference angle for each of our angle answers. So reference angle, remember, is just the distance from the terminal side of an angle to the x-axis. So that is 30 degrees or pi over six radians, as is that. So now we're ready for step two. Let's actually state our angle answers. And first we're going to do this if we were just asked to find the answers on the interval zero to two pi. So those are sometimes referred to as on the unit circle. And let's start with our angle in quadrant one. This one's a pretty easy one to find because we know that angle simply rotates from its standard initial position, pi over six radians. So that is that angle in quadrant one, pi over six. Now in quadrant two, you'll probably have to do a little bit more, more work to find this angle. So again, from standard initial position here, you're rotating almost a half rotation or almost two pi. Now you may just know which angle has a reference angle of pi over six in quadrant two. If you're really familiar with your unit circle and once you practice solving a little bit, I think that you'll be able to make the jump right there. But for now, let's go ahead and rewrite pi as six pi over six. And we do that so it has a common denominator with that reference angle. Because to get to the actual angle in question, we rotated one pi over six less than pi. So all we have to do is subtract six pi over six minus one pi over six. And that tells us our angle two answer, uh, quadrant two angle answer is going to be five pi over six. So we have our solutions here on the interval from zero to two pi. Now, if you were asked to solve this equation for all solutions, you see that sometimes for all solutions, you just need to make a small adjustment and we're going to represent our answers with solution equations instead of single solutions because let's look first at pi over six. This is a solution. If you want to substitute it back in, 
the sine of pi over 6 is positive 1 half. But remember that we have something called a coterminal angle. Um, and co coterminal angles are angles that share the same terminal side. So if you rotate an entire rotation around, adding 2 pi, that's a full rotation, you'll get another angle. Do that math, it'll be 13 pi over 6. That's coterminal to pi over 6 and is also a solution. And you could do that an infinite number of times, rotating 2 pi around in either direction. And so we want to get all of those solutions represented by these two solution equations. So again, we're starting with this quadrant one angle. We have theta can equal pi over 6. And to say and all its coterminal, coterminal angles, here's what we're going to say, plus 2 pi k. So 2 pi is a full rotation around in radians, and k represents an integer. And it represents any integer. Depending on what you substitute in for k, you'll get a different coterminal angle that's also a solution. So try that out if you're interested. It's a really neat way to represent infinitely many solutions. So that is for all the quadrant one angles. And we can do another solutions equation for our quadrant two angle. Theta is five pi over six plus all its coterminal angles plus two pi k. And so that'll get all the solutions to this equation. Hopefully this helped you master some of the basics for solving trig equations. Um, be sure to check below in the video description. There'll be links to more worked out examples. Um, those unit circle basics I mentioned earlier, um, and I'll also put a link for solving um, or finding exact values in case you're interested in that. Thanks for watching.